Today I'd like to talk to you about some of our experiments over the last decade involving laboratory studies of something known as pranic healing uh, with cells and cultures subjected to gamma radiation. First, what is pranic healing? Pranic healing is actually a biofield therapy. It was established in China thousands of years ago. It was rediscovered and reformulated by Master Mei Ling in the 6th century and more recently in the 20th century by Master Chua Kak Su. It's actually a type of what I'll call subtle energy and here I'm using the term subtle energy more in a metaphorical way for basically something that we really don't fully understand. And you'll see why this is the case as we proceed. Now, what's the basis for pranic healing? This is the basis for pranic healing as described by a pranic healer, certainly not a scientist. In fact, there are many terms here that many of us in the scientific community would have a few problems with. But in any case, let me describe how a pranic healer would describe the basis for pranic healing. It turns out that some sensitive people perceive energy fields as auras of color surrounding the body, process known as clairvoyance. Colors in the aura and the energy centers or chakras shift constantly, reflecting the state of the body, health and illness. And then by projecting, as this is the way the pranic healer would be working, projecting energy, in quotation marks again, of appropriate colors can in fact change the colors of the aura and therefore the state of health. Now, how does a pranic healer actually go about their work? This is a process. First, they give blessings and recognition to masters and teachers that have provided guidance. They actually scan the energy or the aura of the subject to diagnose any abnormalities. They then clean and energize the body, chakras, and the aura of the subject with prana of appropriate colors to promote healing and balance. Well, how can we actually evaluate this uh, process to really see if, in fact, it is working as prescribed? Our objectives were to critically evaluate pranic healing, but in a laboratory setting that we had much better control of the variables involved, and specifically to investigate possible mediation effects of pranic healing on HeLa cells, which is a human cell line, in culture subjected to gamma radiation. Now, the experimental model that we used, once again, was HeLa cells in culture. This is a cell line, human cell line, that's been used for many, many years to look at the effects of uh, uh, low-level uh, electromagnetic radiation. We actually then measure the radiation survival rates with and without pranic healing. And once again, one of the reasons that we selected this model is that it's a laboratory model that is well established and well characterized. We begin these studies with something that I will call a single experiment, and I will refer to this in the presentation as a single experiment. Each single experiment involved 10 basically identical Petri dishes with HeLa cells in culture. Two of these, labeled as A, were controls. B were, B1 and B2 were subjected to radiation only. Then the uh, C1 and C2 Petri dishes were, pranic healing was applied after radiation. D1 and 2 2 pranic healing was applied before radiation. And E1 and E2, pranic healing was applied both before and after radiation. Our first study goes back to 1997 and let me share this with you because I think uh, the results are, are rather interesting. We began with 25 single experiments using three different pranic healers. In this study, only two, only two out of the 25 experiments were successful. So only 8% were successful. Well, I was ready to turn it in and say, well, this doesn't work, let's move on to something else. Uh, but I was still kind of curious as to why two of them did work. Talking with the pranic healers, they all came back with the response that, well, you know, you're working in a we're working in a dirty lab. And I said, dirty lab? You guys clean it every week. I mean, what is the problem here? 
And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. Your lab is etherically dirty. We find that the, that the lab is very dirty when we go in and work there, and we would, we would really prefer to work in a clean lab. And so my response is, well, if you want a clean lab, let's make a clean lab. So the pranic healers then applied the pranic healing techniques that they would apply to the cells in culture to the lab itself to clean the lab and make it more suitable for doing experiments. So the apparent problem was experiments were conducted in a unconditioned or dirty laboratory space, and we'll come to refer, this, to, refer to this a bit later as an unconditioned lab space that now we want to condition. The pranic healers worked on this lab daily for a period of about four months. And after this four month time period, the healers felt that the lab was clean enough that they felt they could do a series of experiments. So we tried the experiments again. Instead of 25 experiments, we decided to do 50 single experiments. The experiments are now conducted in what I'll call a conditioned or clean space. And out of these 50 single experiments using three different pranic healers, 44 out of 50 experiments were successful. So we went from a success rate of 8% in a, in a dirty lab or ill-conditioned lab to 88%. This led us then, once again, this study was done in 1997, and that led us then to a more extensive study which we have under, have undertaken over the last decade between 1998 and today. At the meeting in La Jolla a few years ago, we reported on a study involving, uh, sorry, we reported on a, a study involving 70 single experiments. Here we now report on a series of 854 single experiments using 10 different pranic healers. We also have done four experiments using four groups of pranic healers. In uh, one group there was 24, another 32, 42, and 38 healers all working together. We also conducted 350 experiments to test conditioning of laboratory space, 80 experiments using three Qigong masters, 150 experiments using eight individual energy healers. Uh, sort of to go to the chase, uh, the pranic healers, in fact, were able to affect a change in the uh, uh, survival rate of the cells. And the, the results were actually surprisingly close, if not identical, to the results that we obtained with Qigong Masters, as well as these number of individual energy healers. So even though the energy or the uh, therapeutic processes may be quite different in these cases, the end results seem to be almost identical. Let's look at sort of the experimental design. The healers were extensively interviewed at the beginning of the study, and each experiment only went forward if each healer felt confident on being able to work that day. We then interviewed the healers at the end of the study to record their impressions, and actually, as it turned out, if they went forward with the study, they all felt, they all felt that they were successful in having an effect on the cells and culture. And of course, it's useful to remind ourselves that several of the healers from the beginning found the lab dirty, and this led to etherically cleaning the lab uh, during the study, and that process has been going on now for over the last decade. I have a very clean lab, in case you can't. <laughs> Here are some typical results that kind of summarize this 854 experiments. The control group, uh, the cell survival rate, 100%, as you would expect, those treated, those treated with radiation only, survival rate of about 50%, as you would expect. We gave a level of gamma radiation that over a 24-hour period would, was designed to produce a survival rate of 50%. The cells that were treated after radiation, survival rate jumped up to 70%. Before radiation, up to 80%. Before and after radiation, up to over 90% an unheard of change in cell survival rate. Let me kind of summarize the results of these 854 experiments. 
the distance